hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel so for today's video i'm gonna be doing another iceberg video um i filmed my first one not too long ago and i had a lot of fun filming it and it ended up being a blast and so you know what it's something that's trending and there's a ton of these to go around so why not give it another shot so i was browsing the iceberg charts website and i found another very interesting iceberg chart that i want to take a look at today so this one is called the place and city names iceberg so this is like many other iceberg charts that there are out there but this one is specifically about weird names like town names city names across the country and they progressively get weirder as we dive deeper into the iceberg uh the good thing about this um iceberg that i'm going to be going through today is that all of these have google maps locations attached to them so i'm going to be able to link and give a quick summary of where all of these towns are so i expect this to be a really fun one today so before i actually begin this video officially i want to take a quick second to thank um everyone who is responsible for all of these iceberg and all of these all of this material that i'm using to make this video so i want to start by thanking uh reddit of course the community there the subreddit for um the iceberg charts has been phenomenal in really um, showing me that you can make an iceberg chart about almost any topic if you put your mind to it. I also want to thank the people at icebergcharts.com for kind of putting together all of these iceberg charts in one place and making them really easy to access. And of course, we got to thank the creator of this iceberg because without them, we would not have this chart. So, I would like to thank Even Nuos. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, but thank you so much for this iceberg. Um, I hope you like this video of your iceberg. Please let me know if it's not up to what you had imagined when you created this uh, iceberg chart. I definitely want to make something that is what you were envisioning when you put this uh, piece of work together. So, thank you. All right, so we're going to start off with level one and um, I mean from the first look at a quick glance, I would say that the level one is a little bit disappointing But after taking a quick peek at the rest of the iceberg I think this is actually a really good place to start Although I do have some questions that I'm going to be working through as we get through all of these first submissions on our Tip of the iceberg. Okay, so to start us off we have Venice. Okay, we have Venice. So that's not too bad so what do we have here for Venice? It says, Venice, the capital of Northern Italy's Veneto region, is built on more than 100 small islands and a lagoon in the Adriatic Sea. It has no roads, just canals, including the Grand Canal thoroughfare, lined with Renaissance and Gothic palaces. The central square Piazza San Marco contains St. Mark's Basilica, which is tiled with Byzantine mosaics and the Campanite belt tower offering views of the city's red roof. Okay, at Venice. So from the description, it's looking like I have seen Venice. I didn't know what Venice was or where it was. But actually, that description does remind me of a movie, actually. Um, what is it called? It's the one with Mark Wahlberg and Charlize Theron. They're like bank robbers, and they're going to... Um, they drive, they drive Mini Coopers during their heist. What is it called? The Italian Job. Actually, that makes actually a lot of sense now. So, all right. Uh, Venice. Venice. Our first stop here on our Tier 1 is Venice. All right. Moving forward, we have Madrid in Spain. So, Madrid, uh, Spain's central capital, is a city of elegant boulevards and expansive manicured parks, such as the Buen Retiro. It's renowned for its rich repositories of European art, including the Prado Museum works by Goya Velasquez and other Spanish masters. The heart of old, old Habsburg, Madrid, is the Portico Line Plaza Mayor, and nearby is the Baroque Royal Palace and Armory, displaying historic weaponry. Okay, Madrid. That was Madrid. Again, um, I don't know why those cities in the top 
in the top of level and level one are here um but i guess i'll know more as we work our way through the end okay so next we have oslo oslo let's see what this says for oslo and then oslo is in let's see let's zoom out a little bit here norway okay oslo the capital of norway sits on the country's southernmost coast at the head of the uh what does that say well of fjord uh okay there's a j there but i think it's like fjord like bjork it's known for the green spaces and museums many of these are on the rig day museum and the viking ship museum with viking ships from the 9th century okay that's a huge word the holman kolibakken is a ski jumping hill with panoramic views of the fjord it also has a ski museum all right cool so that is oslo next we have copenhagen okay copenhagen denmark's capital sits on the coastal islands of zealand and amager it's linked to malmo in southern sweden by the orison bridge uh injured by the city's historic center contains Fredrik. oh my lord frederick is Staden, an 18th century rococo district home to the royal family's amalienborg's palace Nearby is Christiansborg Palace and the Renaissance era Rosenberg Castle, surrounded by, surrounded by gardens and home to the crown jewels. Okay. Not bad, I guess. Next, we have Rome. And Rome is in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, we are in Italy. Oh, I, I would... I would be so upset if I got that wrong. So Rome is the capital city of Italy. It is also the capital of the Lazio region, the center of the metropolitan city of Rome and a special commune named Comune di Roma Capitale. Okay, quick and easy. Oh wow, so I'm actually just looking at the map. I zoomed out and I just ran into a place called Latina. Latina is the capital of the province of Latina in Lazio region. That's funny. I mean, why didn't that make that up? Latina, that would have been a great, a great entry to level one. Not bad, not bad. Next, we have Paris in France. France's capital is a major European city and a global center of art, fashion, gastronomy, and culture. Its 19th century cityscape is crisscrossed by wide boulevards and the river scene. I mean, duh, this is Paris. I guess there's a ton of weird stuff that goes on in Paris. There's the Paris catacombs, which I like kind of want to visit, but also really don't. But I do enjoy watching videos of people walking through that. Of course, Paris is known for the Eiffel Tower, for its French cuisine, for its depiction in Ratatouille, all that stuff. So I guess that's a pretty tame um, entry for level one. All right. Next, we have delhi okay oh new delhi interesting interesting do we have a quick facts about delhi uh it does not does not it's not showing me any quick facts about delhi oh that's unfortunate let's see all right new delhi what does it say is the capital of india and an administrative district of the national capital territory of delhi it says new delhi is the seat of all three branches of the government of india hosting the rashtrapati bhavan parliament house and the supreme court of india okay next we have los angeles wow we're really going all over the world with these level one cities okay los angeles is a sprawling southern california city and the center of the nation's film and television industry all right near its iconic hollywood sign studios such as the paramount pictures universal and warner brothers offers behind the scene tours yes they do on hollywood boulevard tcl chinese theater displays celebrities hand and footprints the walk of fame honors thousands of uh, luminaries and vendors sell maps to stay to stars homes all right so that's los An los angeles and probably the quirkiest city in this level one 
uh, but of course I'm biased as an American. The first couple of entries could have been way quirkier. Maybe Delhi and Paris are quirkier than LA, but that's just my opinion. Um, all right, let's move on. Next, we have Las Vegas in Nevada in the US. So what does this say? It says Las Vegas, often known simply as Vegas, is the 26th most populous city in the United States, the most populous city in the state of Nevada, and the county seat of Clark County. The city anchors the Las Vegas Valley metropolitan area and is the largest city within the greater Mojave Desert. All right, that's cool. I mean, obviously, Las Vegas is known for the Vegas Strip. All a ton of movies are shot there. Some that come to mind, The Hangover, of course, but also the Ocean series. I believe the Oceans 11 and 12 and 13 are all set on the Strip. So that is an iconic, iconic city. Next, we have Shanghai in China. All right, Shanghai is on China's central coast. It is the country's biggest city and a global financial hub. Its heart is the Bund, a famed waterfront promenade lined with the colonial era buildings. All righty, Shanghai, nothing too bad. Two cities left in this level, all righty. Next, we have Berlin in Germany. So Berlin is Germany's capital, dates to the 13th century. Reminder, reminders of the city's turbulent 20th century history include its Holocaust Memorial. Yikes. Yes, definitely a reminder of turbulent history to say the least. Uh, it also has the Berlin Wall's graffitied remains. Yes, turbulent history to say the least, um, divided during the Cold War. Yes, yes, definitely. The city also known for its art scene and modern landmarks already. And the last city on this level one is Tokyo. Tokyo, Japan's busy capital, mixes the ultra-modern and the traditional from neon-lit skyscrapers, skyscrapers to historic temples. The opulent Meiji Shinto Shrine is known for its towering gate and surrounding woods. All right, we have Tokyo, famously um, where the third installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise is set. Um, it is also, I feel like Tokyo is what you think of, um, or I guess the nightlife in Tokyo is what's invoked when you think of like cyberpunk as a theme or like the cyberpunk aesthetic. I feel like I'm thinking of like Blade, Run Blade Runner, Cyberpunk 70, 2077, I believe it's called. I hope I don't get that wrong. When I think of those movies, when I think of that genre, I'm like thinking of um, Tokyo, nightlife, neon lights, the manga akira also comes to mind so alrighty so we just made it through our level one now we are at level two now one thing i will notice about level two compared to level one is that level two is a lot shorter um i wonder if that's on purpose just because we are i mean i guess it doesn't really fit you know the theme of the iceberg where the tip is the smallest but if it has to do with like the wackiest and the quirkiest i guess um, it makes sense that there are a ton of cities in level one, but for level two, let's get started. We have our first city called Nantes, N-A-N-T-E-S, um, where is this? So this is a city in France. All right, what do the quick facts tell us? They say Nantes, a city on the Loire, Loire? River in the upper Brittany region of western France has a long history as a port and industrial center. It's home of the restored medieval chateau de Duc oh, de Bretagne, where the Dukes of Brittany once lived. The castle is now a local history museum and multimedia exhibits, as well as a walkway stop atop its fortified rampants. Our next city is Cologne. All right, so Cologne is in Germany. It is a 2000 year old city spanning the Rhine River in Western Germany. And it is the region's central hub, I mean cultural hub. So what this says, a landmark 
of high gothic architecture set amid reconstructed old town the twin spire cologne cathedral is also known for its gilded medieval reliquary reliquary and sweeping river views the adjacent museum ludwig showcases 20th century art including many masterpieces by picasso and the romanic romano germanic museum houses roman antiquities okay cologne our next city and our final city on level two is porto now where is porto i think i do know i think it's in spain but i could be wrong it's in portugal but we're still in the iberian peninsula so maybe i get half a point for that okay porto is a coastal city in northwest portugal known for its stately bridges and port wine production in the Mi medieval riviera district narrow cobbled streets wine past merchants houses and cafe interesting i wonder why these three cities were included they don't feel super wacky but there's only three of them so i guess there has to be like some sort of significance to that we'll see so that was the end of level two we're going to start level three now we've got a couple more cities in this level three than we did in level two but right off the top one thing i will notice is that this is where the fun begins because i think from this point on is where we start getting to the meat and the bones of this iceberg so without further ado let's keep going i don't want to hold you up our first entry on this level three is boring all righty this is what we were looking for let's see boring boring is an unincorporated community in clackamas county oregon united states oh man boring united states it is located alongside oregon route 212 in the foothills of the cascade mountain range approximately 12 miles southeast of downtown portland and 14 miles northeast of oregon city all right that was boring oregon okay okay off the bat very good entry i would say this is probably the quirkiest city that we've gotten thus far but um we're just at level three of let's see how many levels do we have here all right it's looking like we have eight levels so not a bad start our next entry is utopia look at that so when people say there isn't a utopia on earth you can tell them that's actually incorrect there is a utopia and so i'm not getting anything for that i'm not getting any marks the only thing i do see is utopia comma florida in zip code 34241 so if you happen to live in that area in florida you live in a utopia according to google maps but it doesn't actually outline anything so kind of a bummer but um who knows maybe it's a utopia in the making all right our next entry is jupiter whoa jupiter oh another town in florida jupiter is a town on the southeastern coast of florida on a hill overlooking the Loxahatchee River. Ooh, that's a cool name. The red 1860 Jupiter Inlet Lighthouse offers panoramic views. The site also has a preserved pioneer era homestead and a museum devoted to regional history uh, housed in a World War II US Navy building. Awesome. Whoa, look at that. I wonder if we should take tally for what state in the u.s is going to come up the most because right off the bat we've got two entries for florida all right our next entry for this level three is bear where is bear bear is a town in let's see in delaware so this says bear oh oh sorry got something in my eye all right this says bear is a census designated place in Newcastle County, Delaware, United States. The population was 19,371 at the 2010 census. All right, so that, that should be updated soon since we just had one. 
all right our last entry for level three is america but with a k with a k interesting and this one is not in the united states so that is refreshing our our first entry in or actually not our first entry that's wrong uh but another entry not in the united states so this is america it is a hamlet in the netherlands it is part of a village of n in the Neordenveid municipality in Drenthe, America has an elevation of four meters. Just north of the hamlet is the recreational ground, uh, Rono Stand, a swimming pool, and an old sand mine. So, must not be going. Must not. Uh, there must not be a lot going on in America, for some of the quick facts to be the pool, the swimming pool, and the old sand mine. All right, looks like we had some technical difficulties with the background light, but we got that all sorted out. So let's move on to level four. And we're starting to get a little bit more interesting. Level three was good, but I think level four getting a little bit better. So let's kick it off with our first entry. This is Batman. <laughs> So this is a city in Turkey, and it says, for the quick facts, it says, Batman is a Kurdish majority city in the southeastern Anatolia region of Turkey and the capital of Batman province. It lies on the plateau 550, 540 meters above sea level near the confluence of the Batman River and the Tigris. Cool, 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 cool. So that is Batman in Turkey. Next, we have chicken. <laughs> chicken, where is this? All right. Oh, this is in Alaska. So we're back in the US. Oh, wow, look at that. That is a stark dividing line. So it's right near the border of Canada and the US in Alaska. So this says chicken is a US census designated place in Southeast Fairbank Census Area, Alaska. It is a community founded on gold mining and is one of the few surviving gold rush towns in Alaska. The population was seven at the time of the 2010 census, down from 17 in 2000. However, usually year round, there are 17 inhabitants. Wow, okay. So a town named Chicken with less than 20 people. That is interesting. I'm hoping that <laughs> when they came around and did the census this time around that we got those numbers up in chicken up to at least 10 because they lost 10 people from 2000 to 2010. They went from 17 to 7. I hope the trend is towards the positive and that they gain maybe another 10 people instead of losing another three or four because I mean, what is a town with only three or four people? Holy moly. All right, our next entry on this level four is OK. <laughs> OK, again, another U.S. location. Wow, OK has a high school called OK High School. That is awesome. That is awesome. So it says OK is a town along the east bank of the uh, Verdigris River in Wagoneer or Wagoner County, Oklahoma. The population was 620 um, in 2010. Cool, a 3.9% increase over the figure of 597 in 2000. All right, so this is a really small town then, or really small. Yeah, this one's actually a town, it's not census designated. So our next entry is Kermit. This one again is in the United States. This is in Texas. So it says Kermit is a city in the county seat of Winkler County, Texas. The population was 5,708. So it looks like there's a trend. It looks like a lot of small towns have quirky names. That's cool. I guess that's one of the benefits, one of the pros of living in a really rural area or in a really small town is that you have some really fun history. 
that you can draw on. I guess I, I wonder if for these small towns, if the if the name is like it, if that's all the town has to offer. I hope that's not the case. All right, moving on. Our next entry is Baby. Ooh, what is this? All right, so where is this? So this is in Poland. Cool. Wow, this area looks very interesting. Just from the aerial satellite view. So this place is called Baby, and it's a village in the administrative district of Gmina Mozenica in Pure Cow County Lodz Volvo Diship in central Poland. So I know I definitely butchered all of those names because there are way too many consonants with no vowels in between them. So I don't know how to pronounce those. Uh, but this is in Poland. Cool. Let's see. The village has a population of 799. Okay, so just one shy of 800. But for those 799 people, they get to say that they are from Baby in Poland. All right. Our next entry on this level four is gay. Not that it is gay. No, that's an outdated slang. But this is the actual name of this town. It is called gay. And now that I'm looking at it, this town is actually shaped like a ping pong paddle. That is very cool. I want that has to be done on purpose. Well, let's see what the quick facts say. All right, so this is in Georgia, in the state of Georgia, in the US, not the country, in Eastern Europe. So it says, Gay is a town in Meriwether County, Georgia, United States. Oh my God, the population is 89 as of 2010. Wow. What is this backstory behind this, the borders of this town? Oh my God, the border just cuts through this person's driveway, it looks like. Wow, this town might be deserving of its own video because these town lines are interesting to say the least. Do they have a high school? Do they have a gay high school? No, they don't. Or at least not from the looks of it. Alrighty, our last town on this level four is Love. Where is Love located? If you are looking for Love, you won't have to look any longer because I'm going to give you the exact location of where you can find Love. It is in La Paz County, Arizona. It says Love is a populated place in La Paz County, Arizona. It is located in uh, Uria Ranch Road, five miles northwest, northeast of Wenden. Huh. Ernest Love is the town's namesake. So does that mean that's like the, that is the, um, uh, how do you say? That is the nickname for the town. Hey, what's up guys? So I've just been editing this video and I decided that I think I'm actually gonna turn this video into a three part series just because it is taking a long time to edit and the video would be over an hour long. And so I think for the sake of my sanity and for the sake of giving you guys something to look forward to, I think I'm gonna split this video up into three parts just so that I can release something now while I'm working on the rest of the video. So thank you, we got through part one. Be on the lookout for the second and potentially a part three of this video. Thank you though, catch you on the next video, bye.